speak, Lord. Is there anybody here who needs a word from the Lord? A word that ministers. And that word now is what the Lord has been stored for you. Scripture was 
Proverbs 3. It's, and it, I just looked at it and then I started going. Said we will write them all. Ooh, I see y'all be on Instagram, huh? Y'all be so we really ought to write. Okay, let us sing the song, all right? Come on, let's go for it. God, gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. Yeah. So let not mercy. And true, say forsake you, forsake you, say forsake you, let not mercy, and we say forsake you, say forsake you, say we really are the
Jesus tonight. excited host, Apostle J. Charles Carrington Jr. I'm the senior pastor of Life Builder Church and welcome one and all. I welcome you once. Come on, let's go old school. <laughs> I welcome you twice. I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Y'all remember that old, that greeting that Sister Melba used to give before the offering? <laughs> welcome in the guests. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do how you're about to speak it to our lives, how you're speaking even now. Lord, thank you for the music that cuts the trough, that makes the water of the word flow freely. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. And you get the glory in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Write your word on the tablet of our heart. And you be glorified, seen and heard, and not me. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ready for this word, hold your Bibles, whether you have it by tablet, whether you got it by pad or actual Bible, say this behind me. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I am also a doer. And my life is so much blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. I declare your word, Father, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, giving me present clarity and future illumination. I hide my word, your word, Lord, I hide in my heart 
that I may not sin against you. Lord, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear your word today. And as a result of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this experience better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, just before I get started, told you last week, these two books I just released. The paperback, you can get it through me, or when Amazon re-ups on it, you can get it right now. The anti-establishment Jesus is available via ebook on Amazon and paper book via me. <laughs> oh, Jesus never sought to get along to go along. In fact, he came to take charge and take over. Oh, this is what this book is about. Calm and docile church in these crucial times has failed to truly represent the true sense of kingdom. Unfortunately, the adverse, often nonsensical, and debauchery had gained a foothold that calls us to arms as the body of Christ. The purpose of this book is neither to solicit violence, nor flesh-focused approaches. At no time are solutions generated through and by the flesh, and nor will they get the job done. We have a change, and we have to change our approach. Become kingdom focused, Christ centered, and willing to move beyond our comfort zones of the establishment. Man, this is what this book is all about. If I were you, I would go get it today. Again, you can write me, it's all in the chat how to get it. Amen. You can inbox me if you want the paperback. Or right now, go to Amazon. The links are in the description and get this book on ebook. We also have released a book written back in 2000. I wrote this original book back in 2000. My wonderful wife got it published for me as a birthday present in the year 2000. Well, I revised it, did some additional commentary, clarified some things, uh, just brought some things up to date to deal with the times about pandemic, the Great Reset, other things we're talking about in this book, plain talk, commentary of the revelation of St. John the Apostle, revised. Love, you got to get this book. I happen to have it, amen, in hardback, paperback, and ebook. It is available right now on Amazon. You got to go get it. It's a commentary. It's a commentary. That means you read it along with the Bible. It clarifies, it deepens your understanding, and it blesses you. Get your copy today. You want to get that hardback. I'm waiting on my hardback copies to come in because I like the way the Lord led me to do that hardback. Powerful. Well, we're on lesson number seven. Lesson number seven of this evangelism series. And today we're talking from the topic. Man, this music jam today is cooking with gaze. Lesson seven, how do we evangelize? Beloved, if you follow me as a preacher, teacher, minister of the word, man of God, I always seek to put a high old two lesson involved in what I have to say. I don't want to just give you principles to be impressed by. I want to give you line upon line. Precept upon precept, here little, there little, what you need to do to carry this word out. I'm not giving you something that's theory. I'm giving you my life, what I've lived, what I experienced, what I'm talking about. So we want to understand how do we evangelize. Man, they got some more jams on, man. I'm going to try my best not to get distracted. I mean, check this out. <laughs> Come on. It's all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Whoa, doggy. All right, let's go, let's go. Word is nigh. Look at our text in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. I'm going to go King James today for, for a minute. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. PK, this is for you. 
Matthew 28, 19, 20. She knows who she is. From the King James Version. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, look at here, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus was talking. Then we look at Mark 16, 15 through 18, again, from the King James Version. Mark 16, 15 through 18, from the King James Version. And it reads, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized, and shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. All these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. God have mercy. Y'all hear this? My background needs uh, deliverance today. And we're going to make sure it get delivered. My background keeps changing on me. Come on. Come on. Amen. Verse 16 again. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, I am not criticizing anybody's belief. I know there's a sect of Christians. I'm not going to say they're not. But they are literalists in the scripture. Uh, they take out snakes in their worship and to see who's holy and to test our purity, they dance with snakes. I don't know how many have been beat, bitten recently, but um, I don't think we need to go that far. But to properly exegete that portion of the scripture, you know, there was persecution of the church. And in Jerusalem, when they started getting persecuted, the saints ran. My daddy, he with the Lord now, but one valuable lesson he taught me, among others, is a good run is better than a bad stand. He said, son, if it's too many to fight at once, run, pick them off at one time when you catch them alone. And I followed his advice. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Now, I don't believe we dance with snakes, and I don't believe that's godly. But while the saints were running from their lives, and we even see that happen to the Apostle Paul in the latter chapters of the book of Acts, when they were on that mountain, or actually on that island, I should say, and they were gathering wood, and uh, an asp, a snake, some type of viper, jumped out of the wood, because the wood was about to be thrown in a fire and attached to Paul. It was a poisonous snake. The islanders sat there to see if he would kill over and die. And Paul shook the snake off into the fire <laughs> and kept on going, kept on living. They thought he was a god. No, but no, this was the scripture being fulfilled. Sometimes the saints in running from the Romans and the other persecutors would encounter perils in the wild, such as wild animals, such as uh, people hunting them, vigilantes. And the Bible gave these specific things. If you drink, drink anything, poison and won't hurt you. Take up serpents and it won't harm you. You know, all this is the proper exegesis, the proper understanding of that text. There's anybody that picks up snakes in church, listen to me today, could I appeal to you to stop it? You don't need to put God to the test by picking up a snake. Live holy, it will show. But that's not the message for today. We're talking about how to evangelize the world, right? Now, when it comes to evangelism, 
One standard step-by-step -step method is not always effective. I cannot go into a Chinese underground church and I'm a preacher at heart. I, I'm a preacher. I, I become more of a teacher in my presentation and more of an expositor because I have to. Every environment don't understand how God, oh, Jesus. I'm grabbing my hair and kicking my leg. So, you know, I'm a preacher at heart. And I've always wanted to have substance, but I realize every environment is not the environment for that. Especially in times when I'm evangelizing, I have to be able to adjust. Now, the problem is, while there are many preachers being asked to adjust to being teachers, there are not a whole lot of teachers that I've heard that can adjust to being a preacher. All right? And I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying, let's be fair now. There are time and place for everything. There's time to hoop, and there's time to expository. There's time to ah, go. <laughs> and there's time to stand on the word and declare it flat-footed. We need to stop that argument and just do what the Lord says. Pray for the anointing of the sons of Issachar and flow in your gift. I happen to be a sometime hooper, not all the time. I want to be a full counsel preacher. I want to be a full counsel word deliverer. I want to discern the atmosphere so I can be effective. But I cannot go into a Chinese church. I once preached in Germany years ago. We spot in Germany. I preached how God fell into worship. Then the Lord began to move and I began to hoop. <laughs> and I, I I came in the middle of preaching to the Germans because I had to stop every now and then so they can interpret what I said. The Lord is good. And they said it in German. Uh, and, 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 and as I began to get excited, the interpreter smiled at me <laughs> and just did like this. Because I was getting into the yeah God. Huh? Oh. And they were like, oh, I don't, I can't interpret that. I had to, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they laughed, but they knew the word was getting good to me. And after a while, they started flowing. But while I was preaching, I had to stop between phrases and let the uh let the interpreter catch their breath and catch up. <laughs> but that taught me. You know, I have to be able to flow in every environment. But when it comes to evangelism, one size does not fit all situations. In Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Matthew 28, the words of Jesus said, Go into all the world, teach all nations. Mark 16 says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. So both are needed. We just need to ask God for the wisdom when to employ either. There are times when you teach. There are times when you preach. And you don't put down one above the other. You obey God and flow as the Holy Ghost leads. I hope that more of us learn to do that. Because what is constant about evangelism, because one size does not fit all. Now, I want to say this side note. My pastor, Apostle Ivy Hillian, is a preacher and a teacher, but he mainly teaches because he's a teacher like no other. But my God, I've heard times dad began to hoop, sing. Oh, <laughs> I mean, his boy's deeper than mine, but he went down the basement to pull that out. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Everybody was on their feet. What? What? <laughs> Dad began to let it go. That's my man of God. I love him. But we have to ask God for the wisdom to discern the times. Not put one style above another, but have the wisdom to do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Because there are some messages that need to be preached. And there are some messages that need to be taught. But all of it has to have substance. See, while methodology may differ from time to time, there are a few basics that never change about evangelism. Number one, the mandate doesn't change. Can I get a witness? 
the mandate doesn't change. Number two, the message doesn't change. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. That's the main message of an evangelist. Jesus saves. How do you get saved? Jesus saves. How do you get saved? Jesus saves. How do you get saved? Okay. Then there's the mission. What is the mission of evangelism? To seek and save the lost. Okay. To seek and save the lost. Then there is a move of God. God, when he is glorified, when he is lifted up, when he is worshipped and adored, I guarantee you will always move. I said, I guarantee you, he will always move. And the move of God when it comes to evangelism is the breaking down of the heart of the individual, the repenting of their sin, and the acceptance of the message, and giving their lives to Jesus. Beloved, trust me, that is the greatest move of God next to Jesus' life, death, burial, resurrection, and soon coming. Can't do no more than that. Yeah, I've seen miracles. I've seen people get up that somebody said were dead or have dead. I've seen it, and I see it again. I've allowed, God has allowed some miracles through me, but I've never seen, other than the life, death, burial, resurrection, and soon coming of Jesus, there be an even greater miracle. I've seen the salvation of a soul be a great occurrence. And look, y'all might have to behave and cooperate with me till I get this premium. All right? Premium don't have them commercials. So that's my next move. <laughs> I got to do it. I don't want y'all changing it. I like the scene I got. So you got the mandate, the message, the mission, the move of God. Then you have the multiplication of effort. Man, I love this one. By the Holy Ghost. Whatever you do when you evangelize, let me tell you, the Holy Ghost partners with you. And when the Holy Ghost partners with you, Lord, have mercy. You have some power on your hands because you're doing the work of the Lord and the Holy Ghost testifies of Jesus. And when you start talking about Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, Jesus does the work, Holy Ghost comes and works with you. <laughs> Whoa! So again, we have these five, the mandate, the message, the mission, the move of God, and the multiplication of effort. I use M for my alliteration, so you cannot forget it. The mandate, the message, the mission, the move of God, and the multiplication of effort. Can somebody write that down in the chat? I want to make sure we get it. The mandate, the message, the mission, the move of God, and the multiplication of effort by the Holy Ghost. These five entities never change when it comes to evangelism. But method changes. Method changes. You cannot attack evangelizing people like say we evangelize the masses. You may not evangelize one like you do with many. You may not have that opportunity as much as you have follow up and all that, which we'll talk about in a minute. When you talk to one person, you have the blessing of perhaps being the planter and the waterer, but still God gives the increase. When you're talking to the masses, maybe, you have the opportunity to be the planter and the waterer, and God gives the increase. But in most occasions, you're either planting or watering in mass evangelization. Because most folk that come to a mass opportunity of evangelization have heard the word before, or someone has explained to them why they're inviting them and start the process in that explanation. But whatever method is used, God gets the glory. Now, there's much to be said about the power of the intangibles that accompany obedience to an 
of God's mandate. What do you mean intangibles? That's where the method is thrown out the window. Because once you start obeying God, you don't know how God's going to move on the heart of that person. I've seen several instances where you're evangelizing and someone that you don't even know will come and either listen themselves and they're the ones that will get saved or they'll join in with you and agree with you and help you get that person that you're talking to over the altar. I've seen God do some awesome things that I cannot plan for without just simply obeying God. I mean, there are some things that the Lord has done while talking to a lost person that just astounds me thinking about it today. That's why I will never get bored about souls coming down the aisle, giving their hearts to Jesus, coming to the altar, expressing their love and their best to God. That will never become something that's boring or routine with me. God works differently on people, and yet he reserves the right to work the same. But his method is his method. But the intangible is we don't know how God's going to work in any given situation. You don't always have knowledge of how God moves. But you ought to allow him to be God. Now look at Jesus in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He gave the mandate. One word, he said. Go. Then he added to it. Ye therefore into all nations. But the first word he said was, go. That's the mandate, go. Then he said, a location, where? Into all the world, okay? And do what, he said, make disciples. This is Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Then he tells us, not only go, not only where to go into all the world, not only do what, make disciples, he tells us how. He says, teach to observe, do what the Lord commanded. Preach the gospel, the good news to everyone. He added that in Mark. Okay. Then Mark 16 picks it up and says, we need now to expect confirmation of the word. Signs and wonders follow the word. I expect, God have mercy, the greatest sign of evangelism to manifest when I follow God's method and I do his work. When I leave the saving up to him, but the going, the into all the worlding, the making disciples, the teaching and the preaching is up to me. The intangibles are up to God. How he confirms that person could give their life to Jesus today or somebody else could come along and push them over the hump. That person could be in bed late at night and the Lord will take over and just not let them sleep comfortably and begin to bring back their memory, everything they heard and begin to deal with their hearts. Begin to help them to come right, come clean. And next thing you know, that person jump up praising God, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say, giving their heart to the Lord. <laughs> God gives the increase. Hallelujah. But this is really the sum total of how to evangelize. We obey God by going. When we go, we teach and preach the life-saving, life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Then we expect signs following. Again, there is no set method. I will not lie to you and try to make you follow Carrington's method. No, I'm going to tell you, obey God. Go. Go in the knowledge and the power of the Holy Ghost. Preach the gospel. Teach the word. 
compel men to do as you do in Christ, to follow Jesus. And you expect signs following. The main sign is their turning of their heart to the Lord. That's what you do. That is how you evangelize. Then there comes after that, follow up. Got to follow up. You just can't bring somebody to the Lord and uh, leave them and drop them off like they're in daycare. Don't work like that. Follow up is very important. You got to get a name. You got to get a contact. Then after follow up, you got to pray for the converts. Pray for them before follow up. Pray for them after follow up. Then you got to get them in a good church because faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. The more word they hear, the more faith comes. The more faith comes is because of the more word they hear. They surrender all to the Lord. They give, oh, I feel the Lord here. They do what the Lord tells them to do. And then faith comes. Faith for growth. Faith for grace, for greater anointing on their lives. They come into the knowledge of their gifts, talents, abilities, and calling. They begin to do what the Lord says. They begin to make disciples. It's a process. So you got to follow up. You got to pray for the converts. You got to point them to a good church. got to make them disciples. Again, getting somebody saved and dropping them off at the local daycare ain't the answer. Ain't the answer. You got you to point them to a good church. I, I have to say it because it's true. Not every church is a good church. There are some people that just want to dance all day. Nothing wrong with dancing. I dance with the best of them. <laughs> yes, I do. I put that Holy Ghost hustle up in there. Oh, and I let God be glorified. But all dancing and no word makes an immature believer. And then all word and no dancing can sometimes allow for the spirit to kill <laughs> oh my goodness the letter killeth actually I ain't talking about the Holy Spirit I'm talking about the spirit of which you want to get them doctrinated notice I didn't say indoctrinated I said doctrinated can't clean the fish while he's in the ocean what does an unbeliever care about toe in or toe out shoes I'm sorry if I'm messing with your custom what does an unbeliever care about whether you got a hat on or not Opaque stockings or see-through and no stockings at all. What does the unbeliever care about? You know, all that foolishness. Yeah, yeah, some of them need to be taught, do, don't don't come in church looking like you just got off the pole. You know, some of the brothers ain't delivered. Brother, don't be wearing pay, tight pants around your crotch, your scrotal area. Some women ain't delivered. <laughs> don't, 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 no. We, we need to work with that. So... You know, I remember back in the day, somebody said back in the day, they used to have somebody at the door. To, if you had on too much makeup, wash your face. Your dress is too short, put a robe on you. Hand you a sheet. Cover your knees. Don't sit on the front row. I mean, all those things have its place. But what happened to communication? Cleaning the fish gradually. I watched my wife once. She one of the best fish cleaners. And she taught me something. You got to catch the fish and then submerge the fish in water to scale it. I didn't know that. Why is she submerging the water? There's a point I'm going to make. Because it makes the scales come off easier. Water in scripture represents the word. In order to help a fish, new convert, get right, you got to submerge them in the word. Saturation, my man of God calls it. Nobody going to get right one time hearing the word. Nobody going to get right two times hearing the word. Faith come by hearing. Saturation. Hearing. That's how you grew. You heard it. You heard it. You heard it. You got up on a horse one day. You fell off. You got back up on because you know God is mercy. Why wouldn't it work for an evangelized person? So we do 
point the converts to a good church. We make disciples, and then we keep the process going. Again, we obey God, and we go. We teach, we preach, we make disciples. We expect signs to follow, and we repeat the process early and often. Then we follow up, pray for the converts, point them to a great church, make disciples, and keep the process going. But it all starts with one word, go. Father, I've done what you told me. I'm praying your prayer, Jesus, because the harvest is truly white, ripe for harvest. The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are very few. Lord, I'm praying you are the Lord of the harvest. Bring your people to the forefront to go after the harvest. We're living in times that are scary, but you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And we need to communicate that power, love, and sound mind to unbelievers. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, take us out of self. Use us for someone else. Get the glory, get the honor, get the praise. Now, Lord, have your way and be glorified in Jesus' name. Now, can I take a moment, this lesson seven, and... Let me evangelize. Let me tell you, my friend, my brother, my sister, if you don't know Jesus, today is the day to make the best decision you could ever make. You see, Jesus died for you, gave his life for you, gave you all he had. Put his life down for you so you can pick up life in him. I'm not lying to you. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'm telling you, sorry for hitting the mic. I'm telling you, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Somebody's hearing him right now. Somebody is hearing him right now. I, I'm telling you, somebody is hearing God speak through my voice and inviting you to come to him. Now, I'm doing my job. I can introduce you to him because I know him personally. He's the best thing ever happened to me in the love of my soul. I'm asking you, hear me. Turn your life to Jesus. Give your all to him. Lord, I say you would in no wise cast out who comes to you. So, Lord, show yourself strong in the great name of Jesus. My brother, my sister, listen. It's time to come to Jesus. You've been playing around so long thinking that it's okay to stay the way you are, and it's not. Every day you spend Rejecting the call of God on your life is a closer day to hell that you get. Hell is real. It is a place that the eternally separated from God will spend eternity. I don't want you to go to hell. I have no intention to go on myself. Jesus saved me. I have abundant life and I have eternal life right now because he saved me. He filled me with his precious spirit and I'm walking in the newness of life. Can I invite you to do the same? Please, please. Stop trying to walk as close as you can to the world and not go all the way over. Listen, there is no middle ground. You gotta give your all. Today is the day to do it. Beloved, you need to talk, you need prayer. Call us, 443-776-0255. That's 443-776-0255.
We also accept email. We answer email. That's LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. That's our email. LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. Then we have our website. That's lbcbaltimore.org. lbcbaltimore.org. On our email is not just a tab to give, but it's a tab to communicate. You want to request prayer. You want to conference. You you need to talk. We check these things constantly. 24-7 is available. And you will be responded to. But the day you hear the voice of the Lord, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Beloved, we'll be live this Sunday in worship. Our youth and young adults are in charge. It's going to be a powerful time. Bring your children. Bring your young adults. See how other young people conduct worship. Light Builders got some great worshipers and great young people. Great young adults. Come and be a part. That's 7701 Seven Mile Lane, Pikesville, Maryland. We'll be in worship. 7701 Seven Mile Lane. What a name of a street. Pikesville, Maryland, 21208. Come out with us Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We start on time. You won't be regretful of being there. Well, beloved, we got to go. Man, the time just flies. But I love the word. Don't forget our special offer. Some have asked me, and it's going to be available uh, always on Amazon, but I'll talk about it one more time this month. But these two books that are blessing in the earth, you want to get them. You want to get them. The anti-establishment Jesus can get it from me by writing. They ran out on Amazon, but we have copies for you in person. Write me and I'll get it to you. Also, the e-book is available on Amazon right now. It will be a blessing. You go and get it. Also, we have book revised from 2000. Plain talk commentary on the revelation of the revelation of St. John the Apostle revised. Written in 2000, my wife got it published as a birthday present for a baby, me, and I revised it in 2023. Just released, hot off the press. Press of cover, nice pictures inside. I mean, just a powerful book. A commentary, plain talk commentary on the revelation. Well, we love you, beloved. We want you to join us in Worship Sunday. Those who can't be in person, we will be online. We're always, whether we're live in person or live online, we're always streaming. Whether it's the live worship in 7701 Seven Mile Lane or whether it is in our studio where we are right now, worshiping. Come and join us Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Man, we got to go. This time flies so fast. We love you all immensely. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Let the word be rich today. God bless.